Okay, we're going to talk a bit about AI, artificial intelligence, and various models of what AI is and what AI can do. It's, first of all, I think easy, probably too easy to personify AI. And because we think we know what we mean when we talk about its ex intrinsic processes and extrinsic effects, we tend to uh, double down on mixed metaphors. Uh, and yet, models are, are critical. AI is an idea as much as it is a machine. So let's consider a couple different models of AI. Um, let's say uh, a model A. For model A, AI is almost human. It appears in animate guises, as a, a servant, a buddy, a secret supervisor. Ideally, for this model, AI smoothly replicates human representational thought in silicon, such that it can seamlessly automate normal human tasks for normal humans. The more that it AI complements human intuition, the more successful its integration will be with human culture. For this model, AI is or should be a direct reflection of our political economy, of our psychology. And so the spectrum of human to AI interaction would run from docile subordination to active malice. And because of these correspondences, AI, it's thought uh, in this model, may one day pass, quote unquote, human intelligence on a shared track. The solution to AI bias and harm in this for this model is a return to what has been lost. AI that is more comfortably and more naturally human. Now, uh, I think there's a number of different alternatives to this model. Uh, one you might call model B. For this model, AI is a heterogeneous collection of different sensing and signaling processing technologies that augment diverse complex systems, including distributed emergent cognition, but not only that. It's more a synthetic rainforest than a robot teddy bear. So while deep learning has some functional isomorphs with animalian neurologic processes, human AI interfaces can mimic human thought and expression in the interfacial layers, but AI really only partially reflects and overlaps human systems. It's messy and indifferent. For this model, bias and risk should be addressed by contestation and the explication of multiple contrasting patterns. Intelligence is seen to exist in the world in disparate forms, uh, many of which could in principle be augmented by AI. And so more durable and sustainable AI culture includes its secular de-anthropomorphization, less human, not more. In some ways, I found it useful to discuss different models of AI based on uh, versions that are familiar from sci-fi cinema. So two perhaps less than ubiquitously familiar films, uh, Jean-Luc Godard's Alphaville and Andrei Tarkovsky's Solaris. These provide uh, a couple uh, of, uh, I think, important models that AI that we might use to help decode some of the folk ontologies of AI um, with which and against which uh, design must work. So in the Alphaville model, for the Alphaville model, Alphaville's AI is a kind of city-state scale entity called Alpha Soissant. He is personified with the cranky voice of a very heavy smoker and is fond of spontaneous soliloquies about the action at hand and the nature of things. He is centralized, meddlesome, a single point of failure personality, contemptuous of the humans in his domain. He's a kind of telepathic supervisor conducting the strings from above, a new wave influencing machine built for film noir schizophrenics. And he is a he, uh, an ancestor of, of both Siri and Samantha. And as a model, as a model of urban AI, uh, Alpha Soissant is a, a kind of distracted dictator, capricious and vengeful, closer to the God of the Old Testament than any kind of smiling assistant. However, Many of the presumed users of, of Google Assistant, for example, may understand AI, quote unquote, uh, to be a force that is closer to Alpha Soissant than to what it actually is. Alpha Soissant is a persistent model to reckon with, but it's not the only one. 
the another model drawn from cinematic sci-fi of, of a urban scale AI is the sentient ocean of the surface of Solaris in Stanislaw Lem's novel and later in Tarkovsky's film. This is a cloud polis model of AI. Here, everything, all things at every scale and tempo, every memory and mote of dust is part of a comprehensive nebular and numinous totality. Events may happen anywhere, but the cognition that registers them and gives them meaning happens to be up in the big alien brain. That inscrutable alien may be wise or cruel or unconcerned. It struggles to communicate with its subjects despite knowing everything about them, or perhaps because it knows everything about them. So Solaris is another persistent model to be negotiated, but I think there's others that are worth ex exploration. Another model that I'm, I think is probably more fruitful for our investigation and pursuit is this is the model of what I call the synthetic garden or the synthetic rainforest. And here we observe that as hardware and for artificial neural networks get smaller and cheaper, AI can be built into almost anything. It becomes an internal quality of things more than their external supervisor. And as such, any AI is only as good as its input. It senses unstructured or highly structured information about the world and is trained bit by bit to know something about it and to react to it in some way. And in this, and this is the key point, the distinction between information sensing and information processing gets blurrier. Sensing, quote unquote, gets smarter as processing, quote unquote, is defined more by contextual location amongst other sensate little synthetic creatures than uh, cognition in a vacuum. Some of these creatures may call home to the cloud, while some are tightly encapsulated in the miniature little worlds, churning out very specific kinds of concepts about what's outside. Instead of AI in a petri dish, this model is more akin to a forested field of plants and insects, mammals and birds in the air, photosynthesis, organic cycles of seeding and decay, like the bees and flowers whose couplings evolved over millions and millions of years. It's an animated churn of different forms and formations. So this synthetic ecology model of AI has its own cultural ambitions for the city. And like Alpha Soissante or the Solaris model, it activates what's implicit within a baseline circumstance. It's not a, it's not a brand or a service or a product, but it informs how design frames the frameworks with which users make sense of what can be done and why. And so another way of thinking of that is that intelligence exists in the world already. Uh, at many scales and in many different ways. AI may augment any of them or all of them in various diverse forms. And so the model I think we need to explore further and invest deeper in is to see AI as a kind of generative force at ecological scale, one that augments existing intelligence and introduces new forms besides that, um, that situates small closed loops, little ones and city scale ones within open fields where they can breathe.